Hi everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Garden Girl. Uh, today we are going to cover a just potpourri of stuff. Um, we're going to cover the cutting project. So we're going to check in on that. We're going to see where your potatoes are. We are going to go over the seed saving for a hot minute. We're going to go over this catastrophe behind me, which it's not a catastrophe, it's just giant. Um, we're going to go over the gourds, some different diseases to look for in that, because I'm sure you're getting them just like everybody. And last but not least, don't forget the contest is running, so you need to jump over to my page, my Facebook page, just type in the Garden Girl, and you need to go over there and you need to vote. So it's the most likes. So for those of you that aren't familiar with Facebook or maybe aren't sure what to do, all you do is like my page, you go into the album that says 2015 Summer Contest, and you're gonna like your favorite plant. Everybody was so generous, sending the pictures of their favorite plant this year, and now it's voting time. So we're gonna vote and we're gonna pull a winner uh, Labor Day weekend. So stay tuned, we'll be right back and we're gonna jump into this menagerie of stuff. The sound of silence and cars were cutting like knives in a fist fight. And I found you with a tear in your eye, your head in the curtains, and heart like the Fourth of July. You swore and said, We are not, we are not shining stars. This I know, I never said we are. If you lost and alone, or you sing. Like a stone, carry on. May your past be the sound of your fear on the ground. Carry on, carry on, carry on. We are, we are shining stars. Carry on, we are invincible. We are who we are. WJ. WJER and TV2 would like to introduce you to a new website, WJERTV2.com, where you can watch exciting high school football, soccer, and volleyball replays from TV2 Sports on your home computer, smartphone, or tablet. Also watch the latest episodes of TV2's original programming, Sports Talk, The Garden Girl, The Not-So-Shy Chef, Off the Record, and Medical Minutes, as well as catch up on local community news and search for local businesses. So make sure to check out the new WJERTV2.com community website where everything's local. Welcome back everybody. We are definitely in the dog days of summer here. And as you know, we've been very fortunate to, the other thing we're gonna cover today is watering, by the way. Um, we have definitely had our weather straighten up. We have not had loads of rain. It's the monsoon season I hope is done. So everybody's plants should be straightening out pretty good. At least that's a buzzword I'm hearing from everybody when I run into them at the grocery store and everything. So the first thing we wanna do, it's that time of year where, you know, you're gonna start saving seeds on stuff, if you're anything like me. Well, what do you save them in? How do you save them? Last season, we did cover it just a little bit, but I wanted to touch base for those of you that haven't seen it, so we're just gonna to touch base on it real quick. Um, one, you can see these poor little dried things. Okay, this is just my Coreopsis, and how I go about drying is one, you have got to make sure that this is not a propagation prohibited plant, which means a new maybe variety um, that you know, you're not going to get in trouble for keeping the seed on or whatever. Um, this one here has been around forever. This is my early sunrise. So what I do, I take a couple of the nice buds, the really nice big healthy buds, and when they're done blooming, um, just like you know, tomatoes, everything when you take them, you're going to cut them off. And I put mine in my windowsill. You can put yours outside, however, what I will tell you is as they dry, they obviously lose their water weight. So they blow around really easy. I found that out, learned from my experience on this. 
Um, so all I do is I just take a piece of scrap paper and I set them down on top of the scrap paper and they just cook. I just let them bake in my windowsill until they're absolutely beyond dry, okay? Once I do that, you can see my little tote here. This is all my seeds. You can see I have some Sharpies on top with my large marigolds, everything else. I've already picked old prescription bottles work great. And I have already picked out one. I've taken my masking tape and used my Sharpies. And what you're gonna notice is I always put what I'm saving in here. That is key. And this is why it's really, really important because I have done it in the past where I have messed up and not put it down and I'm like, uh-oh, which one was that? What tomato seed was that? So do yourself a favor, mark everything. Um, pill bottles do work great. And all you're gonna do is seed them out right into this, close it up and keep it in a nice little, and these you can get at the Dollar Tree, Walmart, wherever. It has a nice little lid and this goes into my closet for the year. But remember, the other thing you're seeing on this is the year because some seeds hold over better. And every year that you do hold over your seeds, you have to understand that your germination rate does go down because seeds only have so much storage space in them. So that's just a little tidbit. Dry them, label them, give them a nice cool spot to put them in. I don't care, closet, whatever, it doesn't matter. And mark the year. So the next thing I wanted to show you, because obviously we're into seeds here, is this little batch. You know, a lot of people think that, and I know it's hard to find them at stores, but this is where seeds come in really handy. Um, here's my little cool weather crop. Well, Heather, it's August. Yeah, I know, it's fine, yeah, uh, not a big deal. You know, I've got some spinach, I have some broccoli and some radishes. These are all a little more cold tolerant and what, you know, they're gonna grow well into September. I'm gonna get my radishes, I'm gonna get my broccoli, and I'm gonna get my spinach, no worries. So understand that you can, just kinda like with the lettuce, you can succession plant. So I just wanted to show you these little seedlings. Uh, these are actually gonna go out today and get planted. So they're gonna get their own little space. And I highly suggest it, it's a great way to get crops. You know how our fall's been? They've been fabulous. So you can easily get your second crops on everything. Last but not least, on the last episode, well, actually episode before that, I divided up and did my cuttings on my pothos. Well, how's it going? Great, you're seeing some new growth here. Some new leaves are all shooting up. I told you guys these things root easy, and they are, they're all rooting great. Um, now, notice, you didn't see me dig down in here. I'm not digging. I'm leaving them alone. Um, and I don't want you guys to disturb these roots. So if you're trying your cuttings, just like me and Tammy when we did the cuttings on the other show, leave them alone. You'll know if they're growing because they're going to either die or you're going to see new growth. That's your telltale. So I hope that your cutting project is coming well. Um, I, I hope that some of you guys that do like your veggies and your cold weather crops did get them in already. Um, and I hope that you start saving some seed because it's a really economical way to do it. Um, now when we come back, we're gonna go over this friendly guy here, which is the gourd, and we're gonna go over the potatoes. So this is gonna be the last dump with the potatoes and I hope you guys have followed along with this as well. So stay tuned, we're gonna be right back. Brilliantly practical scientist Harriet Tuttle's search for a more efficient life concluded with an unorthodox solution. Harriet created four more Harriets. Together they were a model of efficiency. However, while identical, they had their own interests and their own retirement plans, each customized with a Raymond James financial advisor, allowing them to enjoy life separately and together. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James advisor can do for you. Hi, I'm TV2 Sports Talk's Bill Morgan. Some people are outstanding at playing sports, and then there's me.
While we at TV2 Sports Talk may have never been All-State on the field, we are Tuscarawas County's MVP when it comes to local television sports talk and play-by-play. -play. Catch TV2 Sports Talk Wednesday nights at 7 and Friday afternoons at 5 on DMG Channel 2. Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, now moving on to some edible stuff. I know it seems like we're covering so much, but it's such a huge trend anymore. Um, and I'm so proud. I, I wanted to mention this too. I am so proud of you millennials that are really taking a very big stance about growing your own food, going organic. Um, even if you're not going organic, you're, you're growing your own food. You're taking things into your own hands. You're getting outside and you're getting some fresh air. And I absolutely love it. Um, what I want to cover now, only because I'm finally starting to see a little bit on this guy, this is my gourd plant. Um, there's actually two of them in here. I, I knew that it was going to vine. Don't get me wrong. I, I realized this. I didn't know it was going to quite do this. Um, but whatever. It's fun. Everybody, it's a conversation piece at this point and I have tons of gourds. However, with the humidity that we've had and everything, you can kind of see in here some crappy leaves. Of course, these are the ones that are shaded. They're holding a little more moisture. And what you'll notice, I'll cut it off here so you can see it quick. It's so common. Cut them off, not the end of the world. Don't think that it is. You might be seeing this on your cukes, on your zucchini, pumpkins, anything that's like the vining, not, that doesn't mean the peas and the beans. We're talking like your squash, your squash, cucumbers, that, that family. Um, powdery mildew, so common. It's, it's so hard to control, even in the greenhouses, they tend to get it. Um, and you'll notice it more probably on the ones that are shaded. You can see some here that are perfectly fine and then others that aren't. I'm not gonna sit here and cut these guys off. Um, what I am gonna do is spray a fungicide. This one is not an organic fungicide. However, this is a gourd plant and this is a decorative gourd plant. So in no way, shape or form am I gonna be eating this. Um, so all you're gonna do is just spray it. And remember with some of the fungicides, and I'm just spraying right now just to spray, but I'll get in there a little bit better. Give it a good soak down. With this here, this is 30 days of protection with the bear. Um, and if, if you choose to go that route, at least you're getting protection. Uh, this just now, mine just now started showing up with it like in the last week or so. So I'm gonna go in today, once you lovely viewers are out in your own gardens after you watch this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go through, get out all the bad leaves, and finish spraying it down. Again, you can look for a systemic. You can use an organic. I know there's some people that use aspirin. There's some people that use the milk and water mix. Both I've heard work pretty darn good. Um, I just, I had some of this handy left, so that's what I'm using. Um, speaking of your other viners, you can train them, clip them. If they're getting too crazy, which I know, I hate to do this because you can already see one has pollinated right here. And this is a baby gourd starting. I'm sure some of you guys have realized with your pumpkins and your squash, the same thing has happened that now you're seeing, you know, you're seeing all these babies come on. If it gets too out of control, which this is about the definition of out of control, considering it's just everywhere, just cut it. I, you're not going to hurt it. You really aren't. I've got tons of gourds, which you can see some up there and some underneath. I've got tons here that are starting, so I'm perfectly fine with it. So if you, if you don't need it, get it off there. Again, it's, it's pretty simplified. 
um, to touch base on the potatoes. These guys have grown like crazy. Remember I said it was my first year doing this and it was something I wanted to try. I don't know if you guys can see in here enough, but you can see I've I filled it up with the soil here a couple times and this is the last time. So again, all you're gonna do when you do the container potatoes like this is dump. Dump it in, spread it around. Now this will be it. I'll probably add a titch more soil than that, but hey, for show purposes, this works. Um, this is it. I'll keep it watered. I'll keep it growing on. Probably add a little bit of bone meal. And that's that. I mean, I'll sprinkle a little bit of bone meal around and that's that. I'm gonna wait for the flowers to blossom and then it to die back. When the flowers blossom is when I know they're forming the tubers. So that's that. I'm gonna fill it to the top, it's good to go. So I'm finding that the potatoes are pretty darn easy and I'm finding really fast growth in these smart pots. Something else, if you guys did partake on the potatoes, uh, remember that potatoes, they, they like the sun and everything, but you can't get them too hot. So if it's getting above 85, which you know we've had some days here, that's the nice thing about the containers, I can slide it in. Where I particularly have them on my property, um, on the property here, it, it's real simple. They're, they're in a shaded spot that luckily, during that really hot afternoon sun, they're covered anyhow. They're, they're you know, it's shaded, so I don't have to worry about them getting too hot. Plus they have the cement that they're on, which also helps keep them a little cooler too. So if you do have them somewhere in a container, like on your deck or something, and you're seeing it's getting real hot, slide them in, just slide them in um, during the hottest part of the day. Or if you're at work, slide them in in the morning a little bit so they're not cooking too much. Uh, last but not least, keep up with your tomatoes. I know there's a lot of leaf spot. Everybody gets it. It's, it's so common. Keep them watered. You know, definitely try to water in the mornings. If you can, always water in the morning. And we will use our fungicide, uh, see, mid-August, till about September, and then we're done. We're done, nature takes its course, because at that point, it's kind of a waste. But for the next few weeks here, follow the instructions and keep, keep spraying them. And hopefully everybody I know is getting ripe tomatoes. So hopefully we're gonna be eating, canning, and freezing. Stay tuned, when we come back, we're gonna go over the watering. So don't, you don't wanna miss this. There's some neat new products out that I think is gonna make your life a lot easier. We'll be right back. At Bear Carpet One, we're more interested in hearing about your needs than talking about our achievements. Here you will find the best selection of floor covering in the region. Currently we are featuring Lee's Carpet. They have been producing carpet since 1846 and still offer the same quality that has made them famous. Visit our storefront located in Sugar Creek next to McDonald's for our store-wide sale from September 5th through September 13th with special financing. Bear Carpet One, where beautiful is made affordable. WJER and TV2 would like to introduce you to a new website, WJERTV2.com, where you can watch exciting high school football, soccer, and volleyball replays from TV2 Sports on your home computer, smartphone, or tablet. Also watch the latest episodes of TV2's original programming, Sports Talk, The Garden Girl, The Not-So-Shy Chef, Off the Record, and Medical Minutes, as well as catch up on local community news and search for local businesses. So make sure to check out the new WJERTV2.com community website where everything's local. Hi everybody, welcome back. Well, like I said, we're in the dog days of summer. I can't wait to get out amongst myself. 
throw the swimsuit on, do a little gardening. It's the best way to get sun, but don't forget the sunscreen. So the most important part, now that we actually are out of the monsoon, su monsoon season and it's been hot and blazing, like I know some of you hate and some of you like, uh, watering. Watering has to happen. Um, I know some of you guys are like, well, I didn't have to water my plants all of June and part of July. Well, no, because we had tons and tons of rain and it wasn't cooking out. Now, a lot of you guys should be watering every morning before you go to work. Um, just because most of these baskets and these plants, they're getting bigger, they're growing faster, they're growing more because of the sun. Um, you know, you gotta keep up with the water. Every time you wilt them, it stresses them. And you don't wanna drought stress them any more than you have to. So let's go over a couple watering things. I know you guys have seen this a million times. This is my best friend in the gardening world. My nice little dram watering wand. I love it, this is the new one. Um, they've even made it easier this year. No more of the squeeze, which I did like the squeeze thing. Don't get me wrong, I did. Um, this is even simpler though, because now it's a thumb. That's it, all you have is a thumb. This is great for getting into your beds. Uh, like I said before, this is great to get into your beds and be able to reach in and reach up to your hanging baskets. Because to me, I understand things are an investment, but if you're gonna garden, Get the stuff, make your life easier, and make it more enjoyable. Because literally with this, I have come to find that I can easily hold a glass of wine in my hand and use this at the same time. Just, just for you guys that do, do the wine and the gardening. Um, next on the list, of course, I'm gonna put this guy down, Woo! is the watering can. Gotta have this. Um, if you don't have a fancy dosatron system or a hose on, like I do for fertilizing, obviously you're mixing. So again, you've got to have a watering can. Sometimes these are nice and hard. I have a back deck here. So what I do a lot of times is when I'm done watering in the morning and I go up and water the back, I'll fill this guy up and just keep it up there. Sometimes I'm lucky and it'll last me a couple days. So I automatically keep this guy up top, unless I'm fertilizing. Then obviously, this is coming in super handy. You can pick these up anywhere, obviously, anywhere. And now that we're into August, just a side note, a lot of stuff goes on sale. It's a good time to go shopping for next year's stuff. Next on the list, which is gonna look familiar to any of you children out there, AKA still me, I've been known to run through them, is the sprinkler. I know, some of you guys are putting in grass still, and that's fine. Just remember, on days like we've been having, um, you gotta, I mean, you, it, it needs to stay moist. A lot of people love to use the sprinklers. I do not recommend these for <laughs> tomatoes and stuff like that. I, I don't recommend them for that. Um, for lawns, I think they're great. Um, and again, early in the morning is nice. A lot of you guys don't know that, and, and not all of them have it, the cheap ones don't. On the DRAM, um, they have a flow control that will allow, you know, not just from the spigot, but from here, how high and how far everything's going. And also, a lot of you guys will notice these doohickeys. Well, say you have to water, but you don't really want to water the side of your house, this is where you can set one off to the side so that your full spray is going this way. However, you can pull this in so that it's stopping this. It will stop this mechanism so it can only go this way. And I know some of you guys know this, some don't though. So if you're purchasing this, I just want you to know these ones here, yes, again, they're not a dollar and they're not Walmart brand, cheap stuff, but they'll last a long time. And this is good metal. Next, which is really fun. I know some of you guys are like, is that a Frisbee? No, unless you're really mad at somebody, then you can kind of chuck it at their head. This is an interesting one where again, it's a sprinkler. This is more of a, um, it's a great toy for the kids, by the way, just FYI. This has nine different patterns, nine different spray patterns. And all you're simply gonna do is if you decide that you want one of these, you just turn it. This side 
wherever, however you want the spray to come out. This is a little different. It's not like the sprinkler that's going to go this way. This is going to concentrate more, uh, but it's, it's neat. It's neat. And again, the dual purpose of it, it makes a great, great, great time for you to nap and send the kids outside. Last but not least, I know some of you guys have planted trees and stuff. Now, you're like, what is this? Is this the new little necklace? Is it a halo? No. This is what we call a soaker hose. Uh, soaker hoses are very nice. Some of you guys are very familiar with them. Others aren't. Soaker hoses are interesting because, say you planted a big tree. Well, one of the things with the big trees are you need to keep them watered or even smaller trees. Uh, I can't tell you how many times people are like, well, I thought I watered it. I thought it was fine. No. What you need to do is you attach your hose to here and you are going to get this around the base, around the trunk base. When you do that, this hose is going to obviously get wet, but it's going to slow soak them because the biggest thing when you're dealing with larger caliper trees and larger stuff, obviously the root system's clear down here. Well, if you just take a watering one, you may not get deep and you want to get deep because you want those roots to really take hold before winter. I mean, some of these trees that you guys get that are B&B, &B, which means bald and burlap, or in large 15 gallon containers, these suckers have some roots. So I strongly suggest a soaker hose. They are not that expensive and they save you so much time because instead of standing there for a half hour or two, you can always, always just turn this on, go do your other watering and let it go. It's just a really nice way. And you can use it on other stuff too, by the way. It just depends on how much time you have. But I wanted you guys to definitely see the soaker hose because it's a great tool. Last but not least, I know we're running out of time, this. You know what? You want to wash your car. You want to spray off the side of your house. Go right ahead. Great. Go to the dollar store and pick up one of these. If I swear, I'm going to start being a policeman here. And I'm going to start stopping by people's houses that I watch out front in, in just mortif mortification that are just sitting there, fully blasting their plants. I'm like, oh, that's great. They're just soaking everything, you know, no big deal. Guys, I'm not saying you can't absolutely use this, but to get a mist out of it or a spray that's not knocking off leaves and splashing out your soil or even your time release or something, uh-uh. These to me do not happen in the garden under any way, shape, or form. This is for my cars only or to maybe spray my boyfriend if he makes me mad something like that so anyhow i hope you guys had fun this week i hope you did learn some stuff um stay tuned for the next episode because we're going to keep advancing things and starting more crops and getting into our cold weather and all kinds of stuff and we're also going to pop a uh, little picture on of the baskets the little deadheaded baskets um we're going to pop a picture on of what that what that bowl cut haircut did. So take care everybody and I'll see you in a week.